talking about sevens offense. In sevens, one of the most common situations is a two-on-two -on, -two on the outside. We're going to have three options that we're going to run on a two-on-two, -on -two, and today I want to make it incredibly clear what those three options are. Furthermore, we're going to try and really maximize our matchups in the two-on-two, -two, and to do so, we're going to go a little bit unconventional. We're going to have our speedy dynamic runner as the second-to-last offensive player, and our big crashing body as the last offensive player. The speedy player is going to try and make space, and if it doesn't work, then we're going to run a crash ball on the inside. New Zealand against France. The two-on-two -two here is, um, is Kaká and Baker. Baker scoring in the corner. Just did a great job of leaving Kaká as much time as possible to work his man. If he had come on the switch line too soon, then the play wouldn't have had time to develop, but he had confidence that Kaká was going to be able to leave his man. And to be honest, at this point here, I thought that the French defender was doing fine and in great position. Kaká did leave him. And at this point, you can see the winger French defender did a great job trying to let his second-to-last defender get back into the play. But at some point, he did have to step in. And the wing does a great job of still almost tracking Baker into the corner there. Really good rugby from both sides. Canada wearing red. Uruguay wearing white. Canada zipping the ball out as quickly as possible to allow their two-on-two -two team to make a proper decision. So there's your two-on-two. -two. That's what's in front of Taylor Paris, the ball carrier. He just beats his man straight off of that step. And you can see the last Uruguayan player the winger checking Paris with the ball. Paris plays through it nicely. Oh, let's go back for that. But he felt that hit coming and didn't really follow through as well as he could have, unfortunately. Here's that side to side attack. Canada stretching Uruguay as they did in the opening moments. But that step from Paris is exactly what we're looking for from our team. Kenya wearing red, Russia wearing blue. Here's the two-on-two -two situation. Kenya did a good job of getting the ball quickly to their second-to-last receiver so that the two-on-two -two had time to develop and they had time to work it properly. Here you can see the last Russian defender has turned his hips out. At this point, both Kenyans changed their tactic. They had been trying to exploit the outside. They'd been trying to get, them around, get around that player. But now they know, no matter what, Russia's defense is not giving up the outside. They changed their tactic. They're going to run a switch, which basically means they're exploiting the middle of the field. If Russia's going to only defend the outside, then Kenya's going to score on the inside. Oyo backs himself brilliantly, always had his man left for pace. This is exactly what we're trying to do in New York this year. Inside the 22, that one was a little bit longer. Just shows his pace as well. Shows his pace, shows his fitness. We're talking now into the 12th minute of this game. Oyo has been all over the pitch. He's like Santa Christmas. He gets an outside line. And here. The Kenyan winger stays so wide early on in order to put a lot of pressure on the Russian winger. That Russian winger, we saw him turn his hips out. It's because he was really concerned that he was going to get left, out, left for speed on the wing. That opens up a huge space for Oyo. This is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to get huge space for our fastest speedy winger to score this exact try. <laughs> And look at him go, ball in two hands, again in decision. I'll always cite that as been crucial, but it's pick up. He can Kenya wearing red, Brazil wearing green. Kenya playing really good rugby in this game. 
Here's your two on two. It's got to be said, the Brazil flat line looks pretty good. And if you pay attention to the Brazilian winger, he's moving backwards across his 40 meter line. Clearly never, ever going to let anyone go down that wing. Absolutely not a telepathic understanding. The Kenyans read the play the same way. The defense gave them inside. They were not going to give them the width. So Kenya took what the defense gave them. These guys were just on the same page for this tournament. You can see the ball carrier did so well to, uh, to interest the two Brazilian outside defenders. And that extra interest created the, the bigger space on the inside. The winger read it perfectly. Little fend on that third defender and try time. Canada wearing red. Fiji with the ball in white. The, the one that got away from a couple years ago. Here's your two-on-two -two situation. Doesn't seem like there's much on. Canada's in pretty good defensive position with three players ready to uh, ready to defend that side of the field. You can see here the Fijian with the ball is not going to be able to make a break. There's nowhere for him to go. He can't cut back. He can't take the sideline. But he has done a good job at getting two Canadian defenders really, really interested in him. The spacing between the players, I mean, I think number one's got that sideline wrapped up. I think number two's got the space in between him and number one. And um, and you can see the space between the third and second to last defender is a little bit bigger. It's still not a big gap. This isn't a badly defended play. It does end up being a, uh, being a missed tackle, unfortunately. And the reason I think we're going to be able to do this is because we're going to play our big crashing runners on the wing so that they can come in on those lines and make guys miss, especially late in the game like this. Two tries in the last 90 seconds. Man, this was a heartbreaker. So this is option three. This isn't how we want it to go, but if the defense is there and in a great position, I mean, realistically, that tackle should have been made, but it still wouldn't be a bad situation for Fiji with a tackle being made not too close to the sideline, options for blind or open. I am coaching this as a crash, and this is just too exciting a play to miss. Watch the, uh, the fancy footwork here. I love that shot. I don't know what that step is or where you would practice it, but absolutely, I want to see moves like this from that second-to-last offensive player. Incredible. Just incredible. So remember, we're just looking for the best possible option with whatever the defense gives us. If the defense has holes in it, then yeah, we're going to go, go try and get some line breaks. But if the defense is a perfectly flat wall, then we just want our best runner to open up a small gap for a big crashing player to make some yards, suck in some defenders, and then we go again the other way. We don't need to score on every play. Don't throw 50-50 passes or get ourselves into bad situations where we're turning the ball over. Let's just take whatever the defense gives us with the three options available. Let's go win some games.